I remember the moment I realized that there was a problem. It was when my four-year-old little boy came out of his room after only being in there for a few minutes and said, Mom, I have nothing to play with. I am so bored. This is what his room looked like. This is what his toy collection looked like the day he said that. Anyone else been there where you feel like you are literally drowning in a pile of toys, but your kids are bored? You are not alone if you feel this way. I have absolutely been there. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my best tips and mindset shifts and principles that I've learned along the way that help us keep the toy collection under control and really working for my kids instead instead of against them. That stuff don't own me. Oh, I'm finally free. Well, hey everyone. I'm so glad you stopped by my channel for today's video. If you're new here, then welcome. My name is Natalie and I love sharing videos about my journey toward a more simplified life and that minimalism, even though it seems like a scary word, it does not have to be scary. In fact, it can change your life. So in today's video, we're talking about toys, how to have a clutter-free toy space, whether it's your kid's bedrooms, even if they're teeny tiny, to the biggest, most grand playrooms. I think these principles, these tips or mindset shifts that I'm going to share with you in this video could really be helpful in trying to figure out how to keep the clutter under control and how to keep your kids happy because that's ultimately what we buy toys for our kids. It's to occupy their time, to let them exercise their creativity, and to give them something fun to do. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, turn the bell button on, and let's get started with tip number one. Tip number one sounds like an absolute minimalist cliche, so I apologize for that, but it's very, very valuable. That is less is more. Something to remember that has really helped me is that playtime is actually a child's work. So creating an environment for them where they don't feel frazzled, they don't feel overwhelmed can really help them start to nurture that side of their brain that actually can keep them occupied for longer than just a few minutes before they ditch the pile of toys. Just like I benefit from less inventory in my kitchen cabinets or a nice cleared off minimal desk space for when I'm working, my kids benefit from a simplified space and a simplified inventory for their toys. It's actually been proven by scientists that less toys helps kids play better. Now, I don't want that to sound too fluffy because it can actually be really confusing when people say, get wooden toys only and your kid is in love with Paw Patrol. I am not here to tell you to go out and buy a bunch of fancy wooden stackable Montessori style toys. You don't need anything more in your kid's collection. If you've clicked on this video because you feel like you're drowning in toys, the last thing you need is someone to tell you what sort of toys you actually need that is only gonna to contribute to the pile. What we need to focus on is what toys to actually get rid of. Toys that are broken, toys that are obnoxious, toys that they haven't played with in months and months, toys that frustrate them, toys that they constantly fight over, but when one wins, they ditch after just a few minutes. For some of their collection, I do like to opt for these open-ended toys like blocks or Legos or train tracks where there's no characters involved and they can just use their imagination to play with it however they want. However, we do have character toys or closed-ended toys, some people would say, like Daisy Duck or Anna and Elsa. Anna's got some pandemic hair going on here. She needs to see the hairdresser. Anyway, we have a variety of toys in this house, everything from sensory and real wooden toys to things that are more character-based. But I think that it really doesn't matter what the collection looks like as long as the pieces are actually being used because all of the special Montessori wooden handmade sensory toys in the world doesn't solve the problem of having too much stuff. It's what our kids actually play with that we consider when we're looking at what needs to stay and what needs to go. It's going to be different for everyone. So the next tip that I have for you, and this is something that I've shared in other videos before, is to ditch 
the guilt or you could replace the word guilt with buyer's remorse i have felt so much buyer's remorse specifically around toys for my kids more than anything else any other category of thing that i've purchased in this house i would love to know in the comments something you can think of right now that you have buyer's remorse around purchasing for your kids was it that cool scooter that they wanted or the hot wheel track that was like the big one versus the little one and they only ever play with the little one or that fancy little baby toy that you got thinking it was going to occupy your toddler and all they want to play with is the box here's the thing about buyer's remorse and this is something i've shared before too keeping the item that you have guilt around or feel like you need to get your money's worth out of doesn't actually put that money back in the bank for you keeping something in your kids collection that they don't actually play with is the same financial implication as letting it sit at a donation center's shelf and possibly go on to bless someone else. I know what I would rather pick, but it's taken me a while to learn this concept. So you are not alone if you struggle with this, but for me, it is just not worth the space that it takes up if it is not being used and if it's causing us grief because if it's contributing to the pile, every time we see that pile or get stressed out by that pile or overwhelmed and frustrated, Frustrated, it's actually working in the opposite direction as what we hope it will by keeping it and getting our money's worth out of it. Moving out of my four-year-old daughter's room where we keep her toys, the kids play in there a lot, and now we're in my six and a half year old twin boys bedroom. And this is where they sleep and some of the toys are stored in here, but my kids play with each other's toys all the time, every day. Tip number three is a mindset shift. And this has been a game changer to curb my spending habits when it comes to buying gifts and buying toys for my children. It's the idea of prioritizing the long term over instant gratification. So we've all been there and I am not here to say that buying gifts for your children is bad. I'm not here to say that going out and letting your kids shop for new toys or getting them gifts for Christmas or for no reason at all is somehow bad. It's not inherently wrong. But a lot of us, myself included, get into this sort of instant gratification mindset where we love to see the reaction from our kids. We love to give them things to see how they're going to react and enjoy whatever they have in that first moment that they receive the item. I realized after a while that my motivation and my intention behind getting them something was more so about their reaction than about how that toy would fit into their collection and how long it would last in the collection. I started to become kind of addicted to that dopamine hit that I would get from going out and purchasing something for them and I realized that that was totally trickling down to them as well that their minds and their hormones were literally being affected by knowing that when mom comes home she's bringing me a gift or when we go to Target we'll be able to walk down the toy aisle and pick something little out and I would always justify it by saying oh it's just one little Hot Wheel or it's just a little pack a little minifigure for the Legos again there's nothing wrong with grabbing your kid a Hot Wheel or letting them pick out a minifigure. Nothing wrong with that at all. But I think being really intentional with your purchases and with your gift giving can make a huge difference because after a while, those tiny little gifts, those little minifigures and those little Hot Wheels or that little doll that I got for Haley started to pile up. Let's really think about where we are being excessive when it comes to purchasing things that just contribute to the pile of stuff that our kids actually ultimately don't end up playing with. So now that you have some of those mindset shifts rolling around in your brain, I want to give you some practical tips for just the nuts and bolts. Like give you a little tour of how we organize our kids' toys, what we have found that really works for them to not only foster creativity and really fun playtime, but also help them clean up at the end of their playtime because that's important too. We're not just here to entertain our kids, we're also here to teach them important things like 
cleaning stuff up after they're done, personal responsibility. I did not tidy this room before I came in here. I didn't tidy my daughter's room either. But this is real life. If you clicked on this video thinking that you were going to see this perfectly clean and tidy life, you clicked on the wrong video, let's just put it that way, because this is life. And worse than this is life. So this is the reality that we're working with. And when it comes to organizing their toys, storing their toys, here are a couple of things that I've learned that have really helped. First of all, it's to have macro categories for the toys. This is the biggest tip that has helped so much. So I used to organize their toys like that once a month or a couple times a year I'd go through things and like organize out every little bit and piece into their own separate categories and within 20 minutes <laughs> or two days it was completely mixed up again. So instead of micro categories we now have bins with macro categories, meaning bigger categories. So instead of um, organizing the trains separate from the tracks or having all straight tracks in one section and all curvy tracks in the other, my kids can't put them back in that order. I can barely put them back in that order. All of the train track stuff and the trains, no matter what the size, shape, or otherwise, into this bin. We've got wooden blocks in here. This is actually two different sets of wooden blocks. Um, some of them down toward the bottom are actually more pastel than the others. I used to have the bright colors uh, separated from the pastel colors. Forget that. Just put all the blocks in one bin and call it a day. Here's an example of macro categories in my daughter's room. So this is her her little pretend food drawer that she uses when she plays with her little kitchen here and we used to organize these by like the type of set like everything in the ice cream set everything in the sushi set we have a taco set and I would try to have her organize them all together but it just got too frustrating for her so now we just throw all of anything that could be a play food into one bin and playtime and cleanup time goes so much smoother another thing that really helps and I know I'm gonna get comments about this saying like my kids don't want to give up anything when we're decluttering the room I've tried it they are attached to every single piece of toy they have even if it's like garbage even if it's literally broken or doesn't light up anymore doesn't make sounds or function or roll at all this is something that really helps and I have to credit Dana K White for coming up with the term for this lesson that I learned while I was doing it minimizing I really wish that I had started reading her book earlier in my journey because I was like learning these lessons but not actually able to put them into words. I used to call it a budget of space where you use a bin or a box or a basket to be the boundary for how much of one item or category of item or toy that you can keep. Dana K. White calls it the container method and I love it so much and that's my next tip for you guys use the container method when you are decluttering anything in your house but especially with your kids i feel like kids actually grasp this concept better than adults do it's a really easy way to take our emotions out of the decluttering process because if you ask your kids to hold up every piece of whatever they own and ask does it spark joy they are going to say yes i love it it's my most prized possession and it's actually a literal piece of garbage so instead of that i will use the container method and i will tell them your collection of legos has to fit in this bin if it starts to get to be too much we need to make some decisions about what needs to stay and what needs to go. For my boys recently, it has been stuffed animals. Uh, my kids discovered stuffed animals in this last year. We've had stuff from friends and family and things that I've bought them and our collection just got a little bit out of control. And so we told them the stuffed animal collection that you have has to fit into this little uh, toy chest. I have a bin in Haley's room. If you guys saw the recent um, kids closet extreme declutter that I did where I reorganized and just reconfigured Haley's 
closet especially, I found a perfect size little bin and her stuffed animal collection has to fit into there. If she ever gets an opportunity to go to the store and pick out a new plush or something or someone gives her one, then she has to decide which of the collections she would rather keep. So the container method with kids has been a game changer for us. Thank you so much to Dana for uh, coining that phrase and for actually giving me some vocabulary around this concept. It's amazing. I know I'm going to get the question, do you declutter with your kids or do you get rid of things without them knowing? I use sort of a varied approach. There are some times where I will have them come along with me on the process because it's a good day to teach them some lessons, to gently teach them some lessons. But there are also days where mama doesn't have it in her to do the gentle version of this sort of concept and to teach them these lessons gently. And so when they're at school, I will take the liberty and go through and make some exec executive decisions and uh, simplify their space for them. I'm doing this for their benefit and they do benefit from it. So my next tip for you guys is to pick your battles. This is something that I honestly wish I had learned sooner. And this can apply to spouses, roommates, grandmas who are well-meaning but give too many gifts, and kids who just don't want to get rid of things. The first time you ever try to declutter will be the hardest time. Please keep that in mind. If you've never set out to declutter with your kids and you're gonna, you know, you feel motivated from this video and you're gonna do it, expect that the what you go through with your kids is going to be the most difficult decluttering session. Or if you've gone through a decluttering session with your kids and you think never again, I am never doing that again. That was so hard. My kids are heartbroken. It was one fight after another. I was battling against them. Then know that what you went through in that experience was harder than what it would be the next time. It does get easier as you go. And as you model that good behavior for them in other areas of your home, it's going to be easier and easier for them to learn these concepts, whether they actually know they're learning them or not. Like I was sharing with you, there are some days to pick the battle over the gigantic Lego collection. No one needs one million Legos. <laughs> No kid needs that many and many of us realize that but the kid might not and it just might not be a good day to go through that. Every life situation, every family is going to be different. Every kid is going to be different and kids are different on different days. So I highly suggest not approaching this subject as we need to get rid of some of your stuff or start the decluttering process when you walk in and feel frustrated, overwhelmed, and angry. The response you get in those situations um, is not going to lay a good foundation for um, having successes in the future. We want to stack up small wins as we go along. So my suggestion is to find an easy area for your kids to part with. If you look over at their little bookcase, this is something that we did the other day. That's why I'm kind of sitting in their closet. Oh, he needs to zip up his backpack. Anyway, I was looking at their bookcase the other day and realizing that there were a ton of toddler board books that my daughter doesn't even want to read. They're like too babyish for her. She's moved on to bigger and better things. And I realized this whole bookcase situation was actually the perfect opportunity to give us an easy win because there were things there that they had totally outgrown that would be very simple and easy for them to make their own decisions about to part from. And we would be able to stack that victory onto their experience and draw upon that experience for the future future when we have to make decisions about things that aren't so easy. We created a little quiet time book nook in here. I actually installed little lights up here that they can tap, little battery operated lights that they can tap and turn on. They sit here during the afternoons or at quiet time before bed. We've created sort of a system here, kind of a container concept of the books have to fit on these two shelves and we'll rotate through them. Um, but it doesn't have to be this emotional 
sad journey, it can actually be an exciting thing. So look for those incentives or look for those situations where they get to set up something new or get to go through the process of letting go of the items that have served them at one point and move on to things that will continue to serve them in the future as their collection changes. Knowing what battles to pick and when to pick them is an art. <laughs> I think that we think we've got it right and then something backfires on us. Don't be discouraged. It happens to all of us, especially with kids who aren't emotionally or cognitively developed as we are. And it's just, we just take it one little step at a time. So rather than decluttering their entire room and going through what's in their trundle bed or through their entire Lego collection where there's sentimental things, we just focused on books. Books was the battle that I picked on that day and I ultimately won, but it wasn't just mommy winning. There wasn't a battle between us. We won the battle together as a team. Me and my kids were the team against the problem that was the overflowing bookcase. We won and we're enjoying our victory and they're enjoying their little reading nook here in, their, in the corner of their closet and them and me are enjoying the fact that their room is no longer cluttered with that overflowing book sling and it's much more simplified and peaceful in here. That is the ultimate win. The battles that you pick are gonna look different from kid to kid and from age to age. At this point, I do about 50, 60% of the work in their room and I have them help me with that other percentage. For Haley's age, she's just turning four here in the month of April, it's much more on me to get things done. It's about 80-20 here in her room. But she's learning little things along the way. We're learning together and ultimately having a peaceful space has been the biggest benefit to my kids. Their playtime goes so much smoother. I no longer have to beg them just to play with their toys because they're no longer frustrated or disillusioned by the toys that they have. Just like I don't want to waste time digging through my clothing in my collection to find something to put an outfit together. I don't want my kids to have to dig through their toy collection just to be able to start their playtime. That has been eliminated. They go straight into their room and find exactly what they want and get going with their playtime. And it ultimately leads to happier playtime, more imaginative playtime, um, longer playtime. Like they will play for so much longer because they're not sitting there like, oh, I eventually have to clean this up. We still get grumbling and I've said this before, minimalism doesn't just do the work for you. It doesn't magically make it so you don't have to clean your house or that your kids don't have to clean up their room. It doesn't magically change bad attitudes or bad behavior, but it sure as heck really improves the processes along the way and how long things take to find what you're looking for and how long things take to put back where they go. And all of that time in between is so much more rich. It is so much more worthwhile and meaningful and it's a lot more fun. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I have a lot to say about kids toys and there's even more I could say. I had a couple of points that I wanted to share that I might just save for another video. So let me know if that's something that you would like to see or let me know if you have like other burning questions that maybe I didn't get to. I would love to chat with you in the comments and I know that you guys chat with each other. Many of you are along for this minimalism journey and you've learned things along the way that you can share with other people. It just makes me so happy and a little emotional to go into the comments and see you guys interacting and helping each other and being there to support each other from all different walks of life or cultures or life experiences. So be sure to chat down there, keep it civil and keep it kind because that is what we are here for and that's what I'm all about here on this channel. If you found this video helpful at all, I would love it so much if you would give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend who might benefit from it as well. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell button so you don't miss future videos from me, whether they're tips for tidy videos like this one or my day in the life get it all done with me videos or bringing you along as I do some extreme decluttering I do a little bit of everything here on this channel and I would love to see you back for more so thanks so much for spending a little part of your day here with me on this video and I'll catch you later your rules don't apply to me no I blow away all the pressure to measure